Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we'll begin by stretching up high to the sky. High as we can. And then, let's go down low and touch our toes. Back up high one more time. And this time, can we go tippy toe high? And while we're there, let's have a wave side to side. And then back down to touch your toes once more. And then hands on hips. And let's have a wiggle side to side. Stop. And now, another wiggle side to side. Stop. Forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and stop. And now we'll go around and around. Give our spines a nice stretch. And stop. And now we can go back the other way. Round and round the other way. And stop. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So in recent math lessons, we've begun learning about another new topic. And the name of that topic is decimals. So let's spell that word together on the board, guys. D. E, C, I, M, A, L, S. Decimals. Now remember when we said that decimals are quite similar to fractions because they're based on a part of a whole. But where they differ from fractions is that the whole is made up of ten parts. And in the previous math lesson, we learned how to name and read different decimal numbers. So what we're going to do now is a board demonstration for our students to come forward and demonstrate their knowledge of how to write decimal numbers in word form. So what I'll do, I'll write a decimal number in digit form and then invite the students to come forward. So what's our decimal number, guys? 0.4. So now let's see who can come forward and demonstrate how to write this number in digit form, in word form. And now I would like Black Gao to come forward and show how to write it in word form. So we have 0 0.4. So, 
So like how, how can we write 0 0.4 in word form? 0 is Z-E-R-O. And then point O P O I N T. Excellent. And now the final digit, the decimal. Yes. So the black cow has demonstrated how to write the digit 0 0.4 in weird form. So black cow, can you say? Excellent. And a big high five and round of applause for Lacau, please, guys. <laughs> Let's do a couple more to see if our students can remember the different ways to write the decimals in weird form. So first of all, I'll clean the board. And the next one is for Pat. So Pat, come and bring the pen to the front of class, please. So this time, guys, what's the decimal number we can see on the board? 0 0.7 is correct. And Pat will now demonstrate how to write this decimal number in word form. So 0, Z, E, R, O. And then what's the next word, guys? Point. Point. P, O, I, N, T. This time, not 0 0.4, it's 0 0.7. How do we spell that? Excellent. So you can see we have the decimal number 0 0.7 and then the number in word form. So Pat, can you say? 0 0.7 is correct. Well done, Pat. High five and a big round of applause for Pat, please, guys. Let's do one more together, and this one's a little bit trickier, but let's see if our students can remember. This time we're going to write our decimal number based on a whole. So what can you see, guys? 1.0, yes. So now let's see how we can write this decimal in weird form. And now the pen is weird, pak bung. So Pak Bung, come and join me at the front of class. So this time the zero doesn't come first, guys. What comes first? One. One, because we've gone from a decimal into a whole. So now Pak Bung will show how to write this number. N E. One point. Perfect. And then Pak Bung, you can just write. One point zero. E R O. Excellent. So notice when we're dealing with a whole as a decimal, the number comes before the decimal point, and then if it's one point zero, the zero comes after. So Pak Bung, how do we say this? One point zero is correct. That was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Pak Bung, please, guys. So that was a recap of the previous lesson when we learned how to read, write, and name decimals. What we're going to do today is we're going to move on to decimals that have a combination of a whole and also a decimal after. So for example, guys, what do we have here? What's our decimal? 1.0. So this isn't a mixed decimal. We have the whole, but the decimal is zero. How about if we change it to 1.2? Can anybody read that for me? What do we have? 1.2. So, how do we represent this decimal in a diagram? How many circles will we need? Two, Two is correct. The first one is the whole. So we know by now that a whole will be divided into 10 parts. And if it's a whole, guys, how many parts need colouring in? All of them, correct. Well done, because that's what makes it a whole. Six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. So this is the whole 1.0. But then we need our second circle. Now with decimals, the circles always cut into ten parts. Because the decimal is based on parts of ten. Well now for the point two, how many parts of our circle are you covering in? Two is correct. Well done, guys. Well worked out. Because it's not point two. So 1.2 is a mixed decimal that's based on 1.0, which is the whole, and then 0.2, which is the decimal. Because 1.2, 1 plus 0.2 equals 1.2. And this is what we mean when we talk about mixed decimals, putting the two of them together to create the one number. And that's what we're going to look at today. So well done, guys. That was brilliant. And what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, listen to, and also practice speaking of how we can work out and demonstrate mixed decimals. So let's turn to look at the TV screen, please, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation today about mixed decimals. Yes. And as you can see here in the picture, there is a large decimal number. The way to look at decimals is, if there is a number to the left of the decimal point, that's the whole number. And the numbers to the right of the decimal point are the decimals. So for example here, here's our decimal point. Now the numbers to the left are the whole numbers. What number can you see? 12. So we've got 12 whole. But then, looking to the right of the decimal point, what can you see? 9, 3, 2. So our decimal number here is 12. Point nine three two. Yes, it's a very large decimal number. The numbers to the left, the whole number. The numbers to the right, the decimal number. All ten parts of this bar are shaded. Ten out of ten. So it represents one whole. Because remember, when we have 10 parts coloured in, that's the whole 10 out of 10. Well, here, not whole, the shaded parts of this bar represent 4 out of 10 parts of a whole. How many parts are shaded? 4. So you can see 4 out of 10. We have 10 parts. And four are shaded. Four out of ten. So if we put them together, one whole plus four out of ten is written in decimal form as 1.4. You see? Look at the decimal point here. The number to the left of the decimal point is our whole. 1. The number to the right of our decimal point is the decimal. In this case, how many? 4. So we've got a mixed decimal, 1.4, which is written as 1.4. And as we know by now, by writing decimals, 1.4 is written as 1.4 because if you look the first digit 1 is the whole the second word is the point and then the third digit is the fraction how many? 1.4 let's take another look at another one so we know for a whole it must always be 10 out of 10 because when it's a decimal we have 10 parts and for it to be whole all 10 parts have to be shaded. If it was less than 10, it wouldn't be a whole. It would be a decimal. 
All ten parts of this bar are shaded. So it represents one whole. The shaded part of this bar represents how many parts are shaded? Eight. Eight out of ten parts of a whole. Yes. So who can tell me what do they think the mixed decimal is going to be? One whole plus eight out of ten parts is written in decimal form as 1.8. You see, the decimal point in the middle, the whole number, the one, to the left. The decimal number, eight, to the right. And that's how we get 1.8. And 1.8 is written as 1.8. With the words there, you can see. So as we know by now, how many parts represent a whole? 10 out of 10. Well done. Because if it was any less, it wouldn't be whole. 8 out of 10 is a decimal. 9 out of 10 is a decimal. But 10 out of 10 is whole. Now what's the decimal here? How many parts? Two parts. The shaded parts of this bar represent two out of ten parts of a whole. One whole plus two out of ten parts is written in decimal form as 1.2. Okay, so you understand now, guys? The whole goes to the left of the decimal point. In this case, one. And the decimal goes to the right of the decimal point. In this case, two. One, whole. Two, decimal. One point two. And in word form, is written as one point two. Okay. Let's do one more together. We know by now, 10 parts is the whole. 10 out of 10, one whole. And now, we've got another whole. Okay? So two holes. Who wants to have a go? What do they think this will be represented as? 1.0 is one whole. What about another whole? 2.0. You see, the whole number go to the left. If we have two whole, five whole, ten whole, we put to the left of the decimal point. And if we have two holes and nothing else, that means no decimal. Two point zero. You see? One hole plus one more hole is written in decimal form as 2.0 because we've got two holes so the whole numbers go to the left two and no decimals so the decimals is zero 2.0 and 2.0 is written as the words 2.0 any questions guys okay that was excellent Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation for them to get a better understanding of mixed decimals. And when reading a decimal number, the whole number will always go before the decimal point to the left, and the decimal will go after the decimal point to the right. That's important to remember when reading decimal numbers. And we've got a flashcards activity coming up, but first of all, guys, time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this activity, we'll have a game of teacher says. So listen carefully. If teacher says, we can do. If teacher doesn't say, don't do. So, hands on hips. Teacher says, touch your knees. 
Teacher says, arms in the air. Teacher says, stand on one leg. Teacher says, hold your hands. Teacher says, hop. Teacher says, stop. Teacher says, stand straight. Arms down. Teacher says, arms by your sides. Jogging on the spot. Teacher says, jogging on the spot. Stop. So we're jogging on the spot. Teacher says, quickly. Stop. <laughs> Teacher says, stop. And teacher says, one arm up, one arm down. Teacher says, what? Teacher says, what? Teacher says, you don't have to clap, uh, hold your hands anymore. Teacher says, arms down. Teacher says, into a ball. Five, four, three, two, one, jump. <laughs> teacher says, jump. <laughs> and teacher says, please sit down. And teacher says, it's now time for our flashcard activity part of the lesson. So teachers, what you'll need to do before the lesson, print off the flash sheets and cut the decimals into individual strips of paper. Because what we've got, we've got various mixed decimals. And what we want our students to do is to come forward, pick one, and then write the demonstration of a diagram of that mixed decimal that they have. So first of all, we need our bowl. And now we need our first student. So Net, can you come and join me at the front of class, please? Okay, so Net gets first pick this time. Pick one and show it to your friends. Okay, so what's our mixed decimal here, guys? One point two. Okay, so let me write that mixed decimal on the board. One point two. Now remember, to the left of the decimal point is the whole number. To the right of the decimal point is the decimal. So now Net will demonstrate how to write this mixed decimal as a diagram. So what's the first thing we need, guys? Circle. circle. And Net will draw a nice big circle. Perfect, Net. Now how many parts, when decimals, do we need our circles to be? Ten, Ten parts. So we've got two, four, six, eight, and then one more line. That's excellent, Net. Well done. So we've got our ten parts of the circle. Now this first number is a whole. So how many parts of our circle need to be coloured? All of it. Well done. Remember, the whole is always ten parts completed. So Net, you can colour in every part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Perfect. So now we've done our first number. We've done the whole. But now we need the second circle for our decimal. So one more circle, please, Net. And again, always divided into ten parts. So ten parts. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Excellent. But now, guys, this isn't a whole, this is a decimal. So now, how many parts of the decimal circle need colouring in? Two is correct, so we can call it in two. One, two. Perfect. Because you can see here, Net has demonstrated by drawing the two circles, the first one is a whole, 1.0. But the second circle is the decimal 0 0.2. Now 1.0 plus 0 0.2 equals 0.2, equals 1.2. And that's how we do a diagram of a mixed decimal. Net, that was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Net, please, guys. So teachers, you can see the activity that we're doing in our classroom now, 
You can pause the video and do the same activity with your own students in your classroom. And remember to choose a different student for every flashcard and have all of our students practice figuring it out together. But now we're going to carry on playing in our room. But first of all, I need to clean the board. And now I would like to invite Creo to come and join me at the front of class, please. It's Prel's turn to pick a flashcard. So pick one, please, Prel, and pass it, uh, show it to your friends. What's our mixed decimal this time, guys? 1.9. 1. 1. 1.9, okay. So we've got 1.9. So remember, the number to the left of the decimal point is the whole, one whole, and then the number to the right of the decimal point is nine, so nine parts. Prel, can you demonstrate how to do two circles to represent this mixed decimal? So remember guys, how many parts does each circle need? 10 is correct. Always 10 parts to the circle when we're working with decimals. Six, eight, 10. Okay, guys, so the first number is our whole. When we're talking about a whole, how many parts of the circle do we call it? All of it, yes, because that's what whole means. Whole means all. So well done, Prel. Excellent. So now we've got our first number sorted. We've got the whole. But now we need a second circle. And the second circle represents our decimal. Four, six, eight, ten. Okay, guys. So now, how many parts of our decimal circle need colouring in? Nine is correct because we've got a decimal of 0.9. So that means nine parts out of ten. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Prel, that's excellent. So Prel has done the diagram. Let me borrow your pen one moment, Prel, because we've got one whole, 1.0, plus the decimal, 0.9. 1.0 and 0 0.9 equals 1.9, and that's how we do our mixed decimals. Prel, that was brilliant. High five, and a big round of applause for Prel, please, guys. And now, let's do another one. But first of all, we need a clean board. And now, I'd like to invite Pat to come and join us at the front of class. Now it's Pat's turn to choose a flashcard. So pick one please, Pat, and show it to your friends. Okay, so what's Pat's mixed decimal? 1.5. 1.5, okay. So one whole point five decimal. Now Pat will demonstrate how to do this diagram of the mixed decimal using circles. So Pat, over to you. So the first circle, always the whole. So we know we need 10 parts out of 10. So two, four, six, eight, 10. Well done, Pat. And because it's the whole, how many parts call it, guys? All of them, all 10. We can call it in completely. Well done. So we've got our whole figured out now. Now we move on to the second circle for the decimal. So Pat, we need one more circle divided into 10. Excellent, Pat. Well done. But this time, we don't need all the parts coloured in because it's not the whole. How many parts do we need colours in? Five. Well done, Pat. One, two, three, 
four, five. Excellent. And remember to the earlier lesson when I said 0.5 is always half. You will see half of the circle has been coloured in because 0.5 is half of a whole. And what we've got now, we've got the full circle, 1.0 plus 0 0.5 equals 1.5. And that's how we do mixed decimals. Pat, that was excellent. High five and a big round of applause for Pat, please, guys. And a big round of applause for everybody doing a great job. And now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, make sure every child in your classroom gets their own worksheet. And what we've got today for our students to demonstrate their knowledge of mixed decimals is we've got a worksheet with four different mixed decimals on. And what we've got is some empty circles. We want our students to understand and demonstrate their knowledge by colouring and dividing each of the circles based on the mixed fraction. So we've got 1.3, 1.5, 1.1 and 1.7. Our students will have to divide and colour the circles based on each mixed decimal. But well, what's the first thing to do, guys? Write your names on top. And give our students around 15 minutes for this activity because it requires them to think, divide the circles, and then colour them incorrectly too. So, Ned, this one's for you. You're welcome. Pat, for you. You're welcome. Nadia, for you. You're welcome. Chu, here's yours. You're welcome. Plow, for you. You're welcome. Bang, bang, for you. And down, for you. Blackout, for you. So names on top first, guys, and then have a look at your mixed fractions. Remember, when we're dealing with decimals, the circles or the squares, we're using circles, but it could be any shape. We always need to divide them into 10 because the decimals we're using are based on parts of 10. So well done, Lackow. The first circle will be full. The first circle is always a whole, so that will be shaded or coloured in completely. It's the second circle you have to divide into the decimal. Okay, so tube, that's well done. So we've got 10 parts and the whole, all 10 parts coloured. Because 10 out of 10 is a whole, so you can colour in every part. Then for the second circle, the decimal is 0.3. So that means three parts out of 10 to be coloured in. And that's 1.3, a mixed decimal. Like out, don't forget your name. And then here too. So this one is the whole. One. Now here we need point three. So ten parts and then three colours. And that's 1.3. Excellent. Excellent, Ned. Well done. That's perfect. Well done, guys. So you can see 1.3, 1.5, 1.1, 1.7. Perfect. Well done, Bang Pong. 
Great to see your understanding, guys. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they had to look at the different mixed decimals and then divide their circles and colour them based on each number. My students here all did an excellent job, so well done, guys. That was great. And that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson and now understand more about mixed decimals. And in particular, how to look at the decimal point. The number to the left is the whole number and the number to the right is the decimal. So always divide your circles accordingly. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.